everybody, what's up? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here for another episode of The Mikey Show. And um, today I want to talk to you guys about what Munich is. You hear about Munich High End and the Munich High End Show or the Munich Hi-Fi Show. And um, Munich is the largest European, uh, in fact, I think it may be the largest other than like Expona, it's Maybe it's the world's largest, but it's the biggest one that's not in the United States. Expona is the biggest one in the United States. If I'm not mistaken, Munich is the next largest, and it is in Germany. Maybe it's even bigger. It's in Munich, Germany, obviously. Um, and um, so people ask me, what's Munich and, and, and all that, and tell, tell me about it. Well, I've already been there once to go to Munich as an exhibitor, and when I go back, I will be an exhibitor. Um, my cable line, Viristar, exhibits it's sold in, in Europe, and I team up with a French speaker manufacturer, and we do the show together. I was invited um, this year as well as last year, um, but my cables are being um, uh, uh, put onto contract manufacturing so that I can actually keep up with demand. Right now, I cannot keep up with demand. You guys will be privy to some of those cables soon. I'll do some short runs, but I just simply can't make 100 pieces at a time. Um, I was doing it locally uh, from somebody that um, retired, and he had a small operation. Now I'm with a larger operation. They do things for the military, so the QC is really high, and, um, and we will have some great product for you guys shortly. But I need to be able to hold up to the demand. So next year, I'll probably go to Munich um, and exhibit as an exhibitor. There's really no reason for me to go as a, an attendee. Um, why wouldn't I go to Munich? Um, because there's really nothing there for me to see, nothing for me to do. I've already been there and seen what it's all about, and I got the gist of what Munich is like. Um, American companies go there because they meet their European distributors out there. Their European distributors will have a room, and so Playback Designs is going to be out there, um, and he will be meeting with his European distributors. They have meetings and stuff like that, and go out to dinner and, and you know see their European distributors. Um, that's what I did when I was out there. European Asia comes over and, and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty big. Um, now what, what is the difference? Well, first off, Munich High End, um, the, the, the promoters of that, uh, show actually do a way better job, um, at promoting to the local people than that we do here. In other words, I was driving in Munich um, when I was there, and you drive downtown in the streets, and there were these banners on the flagpole, or on the you know the the light poles, where they have those banners that go up and down the the side of the light poles. That Munich High End, like one after the other after the other, so the whole town knows when the High End show is coming to town because it's advertised everywhere. It's in the paper, it's on the radio, it's in banners that are everywhere downtown. Um, so it's not it's 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 pretty well attended and it's well promoted. Um, the crowd is different. It's Europe. So as you would imagine, it's more upscale than the United States audio shows. Pretty much all the people are in suits and ties and they're not, um, you know, they're svelte European people with the killer shoes, dude. And, um, and dressed to the nines, men come with their wives um, it's a different scene. It's a higher sort of caliber than the U.S. audio shows, which, which is a bunch of us middle-aged fat old men with bellies and pocket protectors and freaking fanny packs uh, slapping each other on the ass. Um, that's pretty much how the U.S. shows are. It's a total sword fest. It's not like... Um, it's not like Europe where it, it pulls men and women alike, and it's a very mixed crowd, and it's just higher end, higher scale. The high end uh, uh, gear goes along with the high end clientele, and it's just sort of um, a higher level. Um, and, and I'm sure the people reporting from there will attest to that. Um, you get to see cool stuff like because it's home turf. For many of those brands, like for instance, Karma, one of my favorite brands that I don't carry that I think is super cool, mad respect for Karma. You go to a room there and you will see some shit like you've never seen before. Like, um, you know, I remember going to the Karma room and if you notice his speaker is his logo, right? It, it makes his speaker 
there is a shape that is karma, right? And it goes like, like this, and then it's got two circles, then it goes like that, and then it's that. Okay, so he had an upholstered, front wall was upholstered, and the stitching of the upholstery made his logo, right down to the, the fixtures and stuff, his logo was in it. Super aware designer. Um, so after seeing that guy's room, I was more impressed with the karma room than any, anything out there. Um, just due to the level of his awareness and his design sense. I saw some cables from Spain, these Spanish cables where they were, um, the plugs on the cables were all sterling silver and hand engraved. Like they look like belt buckles or something. The whole, um, part that plugged in total Spanish design, like, like opulent, you know, look like armor or something from like the medieval times. Um, you know, re really interesting stuff that you don't kind of see here. Um, and, and so it was very interesting. So if someone has never been there, Munich is a great trip and it's, it's, it's a good thing to go see. It's fun to go see. But for me, at this point in the game, there's no reason for me to go there unless it's business. So I'll go next year as an exhibitor and, um, you know, promote my Vera Star cables into the European market. Um, which is why I'll go. I think I am, um, planning to go to another European show this year and I will reveal where that is later. Um, but, um, all in all, Munich is just like a, it's, it's like Expona for Europe. Um, but it's just a higher caliber of, um, of formality. Let's put it that way. The formality is at a higher level. Um, and so it's just one of those things. It's cool. It's a great place to go. It's a great place to check out. Um, and, and Europe is fun to travel in too. I mean, once you're there, you might as well stay and go see Italy and France and some different stuff because, it's centrally located. Everything's available by a train. The food is freaking phenomenal. Oh my God. And if you like beer, you're in Rhineland. I mean, you're in, you know, you're in Bavaria, excuse me. You're in Bavaria and it's like, you know, the beer is pretzels there. Forget about it. You've never had a pretzel like that. The sausage, they have something called Weisswurst, which is white sausage and you have it for breakfast. And it's not like American sick-ass pork breakfast sausage. It's like, I don't even know what it is. It might even be pork. But it is soft, and you take it out of its casing, and you put a little mustard on it, and you have it with pretzel and some scrambled eggs or something for breakfast with some coffee. <laughs> it sounds weird, but when you try it, you totally are like, oh my God, this is so good. And the breakfast... The spread they have for breakfast, it's almost like breakfast is like a big part of the day there, man. Um, we went to these, I stayed at this hotel, and, and the breakfast spread that they had, the buffet, was incredible. I've never seen food like that for breakfast. And at first it seems off-putting because you're like, man, this isn't breakfast food. We're used to bacon and eggs and, uh, you know, that kind of sausage and pancakes and shit. Man, they, they don't. And I'm telling you, the second you hit Europe, at, at least when we went to Munich, the first second we sat down to eat food there, we had, they put the bread and the butter on the table. We put a little butter on the bread and had that bread and butter and instantly we're like, oh my God, do you taste that? Just the bread and butter was so much more delicious than I've had here that, and that, that we just were, were, were all of a sudden turned on to the fact that, wow, maybe the food is of a different level out here. And it was. So we went on to exploit all the culinary delights of uh, of Europe and had a blast. We went down to Italy. And, and man, it was it was it was a lot of fun. It was a really good trip. So this year I'm not going. I don't have any business there. I have no no need to go. Um, I will be going somewhere else um, in in next year, beginning of next year. But um, but I just wanted to bring this quick video just to kind of tell you guys what Munich is, what it's all about, and it, is it anything different than the U.S.? No, it's not. It's the same thing. It's just of a higher caliber. And so why do people go there? Well, for an excuse to do European travel, um, or if you've never been there, it's cool to see, to gauge our U.S. audio shows because it's of a higher level. It's commensurate with the gear. When you go to our shows, it's hard to connect the, the people walking around with the $250,000 audio systems. You're kind of like there's some sort of, it seems like a disconnect. When you go to Europe, you're like, okay, you know, these are the people that actually buy it you know, that are here. Um, and it's just, it's just interesting. It's interesting to see. Um, with that comes some attitude. Absolutely. You know, it is, uh, an upscale sort of a thing. So it is sort of aristocratic, 
I guess, in certain ways. Um, but I had a blast when we were there, and I would recommend if you've never been there, go go check it out. It's it's worth it to see for for a comparison to our our U.S. audio shows. But I got some great stuff coming up, so thanks for joining. See you.